Welcome back to China Price Watch. In today's Money Matters, we're talking about soybean subsidies. Wang Xiaoyu is a leader in the Heilongjiang Soybean Association. His province and his association have obvious incentive for bringing in subsidies for domestically produced soybeans. His association's report showed a correlation between cancer and GMOs is likely misleading. Even if cancer in China were influenced by GMO soybeans, other factors like air quality are far more likely to lead to lung cancer. As the Economic Observer reports, since 2008, the Chinese government implemented a subsidy to support domestic soybean production. It allows the government to purchase soybeans from farmers at typically high prices. The final purchase price would prevent soybean farmers from losing money. This is even though imported soybeans have completely changed their market value. The Chinese government believes that it's very important to maintain grain product prices at a flat level. The theory that by keeping grain prices flat, that China's inflation won't get out of control, thus helping stabilize Chinese society. During the past five years, the purchasing prices continue to rise. Meanwhile, the imported soybean prices have only gotten cheaper. The price gap between imported and domestic soybean has been growing. This makes domestic cooking oil companies take on huge losses by purchasing domestic soybeans. Instead, more Chinese cooking oil companies have switched to imported soybeans to save on production costs. When the disadvantages of the policy were gradually exposed, the Chinese government began to research and legislate new subsidies for soybean production. As the Economic Observer reports, market insiders said that by this autumn, the central government abolished the old national purchase policy. By replacing the previous policy, the government would provide new subsidies to soybean farmers. The new subsidy mechanism allows the government to set a target price after doing research on the market. Once the market price falls below the target price, the government would pay the difference to soybean farmers. Market insiders believe this would relieve the government of unnecessary financial burdens. One of the other major points is that by doing this, it would eventually let domestic and imported soybean prices reach the same price. This could revitalize the domestic soybean industry or at least keep it competitive within its current market share. It seems a new subsidy mechanism could have been a solution to China's soybean price problems. However, this proposal didn't pass through the state council. Market insiders estimate that China's agricultural department cannot precisely calculate the country's soybean cultivation areas. Thus, the total subsidy amount cannot be calculated. Another reason it got turned down are issues with the country's major grain storage state-owned enterprise, the China Grain Reserves Corporation. It said that its management problems would deter the new policy from being carried out entirely. Earlier this June, in the Heilongjiang province, there was a large fire at the company's grain storage facility. Many assumed the fire wasn't accidental. To implement the new soybean subsidy policy could help lower the artificially high domestic soybean prices. Even with the changes, it's uncertain how lower prices will affect the sale of soybeans. As producers of domestic soybeans, it's assumed that a market price is less appealing than artificially high government purchase products. Don't go away, because up next for a question of the day, we'll hear what Beijingers think of soybean subsidies. Stay tuned.